Mountains. Hey, this year, I decided to do something for the first time. I've, you know, probably told a lot of people about this, but when I got back from Taiwan two years ago, I decided to get back into the hobby of mountain bike riding. And so, yeah, Geordie's frothing. He's like, I've probably heard this story. That's good. Um, and I decided to, to start pursuing it, you know, and I've been enjoying it, and, and I was, I've been riding a whole lot, and I, I heard that there was this competition that was happening in Toowoomba. There was a race, and I thought, you know what? I'm a competitive guy. I want to get out there and see how good am I really, you know? Like, I, I can talk the talk, but can I walk the walk? And, and I went into this competition with just no expect, no understanding of how I would go. And it was just, the, the competition was kind of phased in that. The race was, there's kind of five different trails that you need to ride, and the shortest time overall wins. So the quickest time added all together wins. You have this little race, this little bracelet, and as you start the trail, it starts your time, and as you stop, it stops. And what you have to do is go check in your time at the end of the day, and that's where you find out if you win. I think I got a couple of photos of the race. I was very excited. Um, that was, yeah, shout out to Frenzy MBT. And I think there's another photo. You might be able to see, you can't really see it. In front of my seat, I had a, a tactical orange, a uh, tactical mandarin for some, you know, some reflection refreshment during the day. I actually forgot to eat it and just left it on there. It's still there. No, it's not. I took it off. Um, so I had this day, and it went really good, and, and, and I was feeling pretty good about it. But again, I had no idea. There's like 250 people there. I don't even know how many people I'm racing against in my category. I entered in the expert category. I didn't know really what that meant. It just seemed like the category that I should go in, and <laughs> it made sense to me. It, and so I, I was had this race day, and then kind of Earlier on in the day, maybe there's still another hour of, of racing left. So you can kind of do each track as many times as you want to try to get the best time. I went up to check in my time just to just see how I was going. And I plugged it in and I went over and looked at the screen. And we've got a picture of the screen here. And I was quite shocked. You might not be able to read it, but I was in second place. Um, <laughs> I was, and so there's the different positions for the different trails on there, you know, all the names of the trails, and, but that's my name, and I, and I sat there, and I watched it, because it kept flicking through everyone's results, and every time it came up, I was studying it, and I was like, does that mean I'm in second place? Like, are these in chronological order? Um, or is, is it just everyone's name? I was like looking, is it alphabetical? Why, why is my name second on the list? And, and then I started to get this thing, playing in my head, and it's almost like this hope started to rise that I think I might do really well. I, th I think I might actually be in second place. But And the whole, for the next hour as I was riding, I've got in the back of my head, I was going back and redoing some of the trails I wasn't happy with, and I I'm thinking, I think I'm actually in second place. I think I'm in second place. But this funny thing started to happen where all of the sudden, I started to try to suppress that. I don't know if you've ever heard, you know the whole saying, don't get your hopes up? I was like, I really don't want to get my hopes up because I'll be super disappointed and I'm not here for second place. I'm here to have fun. But really, I'm like, I'm here to win. Uh, but I'm here to have fun, right? But the competitive side of me is like, you can do it, you can do it, you've won. And, and I'm suppressing these feelings of hope because I don't want to be disappointed because I'm not sure. And, and what happened was I was letting this doubt start to creep in to my mind of, I, I, I hope with all my heart that that's true, but it just seems too good to be true. Like, this is my first ever race. I've never raced a mountain bike in my whole life. There's no way that's that, that that's where I am. And, and even the time finished, and, and, and I was kind of thinking in my head, maybe there's more people who haven't checked their times in yet. Like, all the fast people are still out there. That's just, I'm second amongst the slowest people. Um, and, and it got to, like, the, the presentations, right? And I'm still not sure. I'm still, like, I don't know. I'm looking at the screen. I'm trying to figure it out. And I still remember they're, like, going through, you know, third, second, and then they call out my name for second place. And it's like, I had one second place. And I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. I got to stand on a rickety uh, log and I got a photo with my daughter as well with my, with my medallion. And it was, you know, it was such an awesome experience. But it was funny how even though the result came through, the whole way through it, I was like wrestling with this doubt of, of this is too good to be true. And I think if, if I'm honest, sometimes I have that wrestle with my faith also. Sometimes it's like, is, I know this is real, but is it really real? I don't know if anyone else's faith journey is like that, where it's like, 
It's like I've got faith, but I also seem to have doubt. I, ha- I have this faith. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 1 calls it, um, it talks about what faith is, and it says that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we can't yet see. And I know I hope for some things that I can't see for, like, that I can't see. I hope for them, but sometimes I'm not super confident about it. Sometimes I've got hope, but I don't know if I have confidence. And then even with my hope, sometimes it's like I can suppress it a little bit because I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want, I don't want to get my hopes up. I, I know that God's good. I hear that God's good. I hear that He loves me, but, but that just kind of sounds too good to be true. I, I know that He forgives me, but, but I, I'm still struggling with some things. Is anyone else kind of, can anyone else relate to this? It's kind of this paradox I find sometimes in my faith where I believe, but I need help to overcome my unbelief. I do believe, but I also have doubts. I have moments, even in worship, where I'm like, is this all, are we making this up? Like, is this just good vibes? Is this just lights and a smoke machine? And is this, is this all just fake? And it's like, I've got faith, but no, but I believe. But I also have doubt. You know, and maybe even when I came up before and I'm saying, I really sense God's doing something. Maybe you're even standing there going, I don't know. I don't know if he is. I don't know if I can sense that. And so I want to talk about how we deal with doubt this evening. I've called the message, The Doorway to Faith. The Doorway to Faith. How do we live a life of faith? And can I just encourage you, you're here tonight because at very least you want to believe or you're interested in believing. That's the reason you're here, right? It's because, at very least, I want to believe. I might not, sometimes I doubt, but I want to believe. And that we're all here because we want to believe, but I don't know if you're anything like that. me, maybe you still, from time to time, struggle with doubt. Does God really have a great purpose for my life? Does God really have a great plan for me? Does God, is, is He actually for me? Is, is He actually with me? Because sometimes it doesn't feel like it. I want to have a look at this story in Mark, and it's a pretty wild story, okay, so bear with me as we get into it. It's in Mark 9, 14 to 27, and it says, when they, came, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them. This is Jesus kind of walking up, sees the other disciples with um, this crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. Now, you've got to feel sorry for the other disciples a little bit there, right? Because everyone's like heading up the disciples about, you know, they want to see a miracle. And Jesus walks in, they're like, I'll see you guys. Like, yeah, have you ever been talking to someone and they're like looking over your shoulder, like for someone better to talk to? I don't know if you've ever been that. It's the worst feeling. I can just imagine. Anyway, just a little sympathy for the disciples here. Um, and, and it says, as soon as they saw it, they ran over to Jesus. And Jesus said, What are you arguing with them about? A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I bought you my son who was possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him on the ground. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth. He becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive the spirit out, but they could not. So here's this dad obviously distraught because he's got this child with this issue that he can't explain. This child, that's, that his child's just got this thing that's driving him to do things that he can't understand. It says, and Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It is often throwing him onto the fire or into water to kill him. But, and this is what the father says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can do anything, take pity on us. And help us. I don't know if you've ever felt like that when you go to God, when you're praying about something. God, if you can, please do something. If, if God, you're really there, could you help me? You know, it's the, the classic, I don't know what to do, so I just called out, God, if you're real, come through, and I'll serve you for all the rest of my days. <laughs> you know, those little deals you make with God, and then I'll be at church every Sunday until, until it comes through. I'll be, I'll be all good. If you could just answer this thing, then if you can, And then Jesus picks up on this and he says, if you can, everything is possible for one who believes. And I love this. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. 
Help me to overcome my unbelief. Don't you just love that? Does anyone resonate with that this evening? I do believe. Help me to believe, God. God, I believe it, but I need some help believing it. And I love this paradox in this scripture of I believe, but I need help to believe. And it goes on, and Jesus does this incredible miracle and heals the child, and and all is good. But what I want to talk about this evening is that I, I believe, but what do I do with that? I think we all struggle with doubt, if we're honest. And, and sometimes, if I can be really honest, it can feel a little bit lonely when we struggle with doubt. I don't know if anyone else has ever doubted, and it's like, it, it kind of, the, I feel like the enemy kind of convinces us that we're the only one that has doubt. And it's like, I can't ask that question because people might think something about me. I can't question that because people might judge me or people, and unfortunately, the, the church in, in general hasn't had the best kind of history with I've got some doubts, let's deal with this really well. And sometimes I think, I'm like, to be honest, I think people in our generation are, are leaving churches because they have questions they're too afraid to ask, because they're afraid that they might be judged for it. And sometimes we do have these things, questions that we can't answer. Bad things happen and we might ask, where's God? Hurts that we're not sure how to deal with. Sometimes hurts from people who share the same faith that we share. So it brings us to the question of what do we do with our doubt? Now, the good news is doubt handled properly can actually take you closer to God, not just push you away. If we can actually handle doubt correctly, it can actually pull us closer to God rather than pushing us away. Your doubt doesn't have to end with you walking out the door because you'd feel too afraid to ask a question. Your doubt can actually lead you to a place of strength in your relationship with God. And I think the important thing to start with is when we talk about faith, is that faith is a journey, not a destination. Faith is a journey, not a destination. Faith is not a, I have arrived and now I have no doubts. Who thought that would be nice, right? To one day just, all the doubts are gone. I have no doubts. I have graduated from the College of Faith, and I have no more doubts. I don't doubt anything. I don't doubt. uh, Jesus said it. I believe it. I've got no doubts. That's not what faith is. Faith is a journey. There's no such thing as a perfect faith without doubt. It's a process, and it's a process of choosing over and over and over again to trust God, often in the face of doubt. I have doubt, but I'm going to choose to trust God. I have, I have doubt. It, so faith is a journey. Now, I don't know about you. Sometimes it can feel like we're going really well in that journey. Has anyone ever been really happy? And hopefully this is where you're at with your journey with faith. Like, this is great. I'm making progress. I'm, my faith is being strengthened. And it's, we go on this journey of, of faith, and it's like I'm, I'm growing stronger, and, and, and I'm, I'm trusting God more, and maybe I prayed for something, and it actually worked. I was driving my car. I prayed for a car park. Someone pulled out right in front of the door. My faith is doing good. I'm on a strong faith journey. It's like everything's clicking. Everything feels so good with our faith. And then all of a sudden, it's like we come to a roadblock. It's like... Ah, oh, something happens and all of a sudden, it's like my journey comes to a halt. I'm going to reveal this. It's not as exciting as it looks like it should be. It's a door. Um, uh, this is pretty well workplace health and safe. I made it myself. Um, sometimes we, we, we're on our journey and it's like we're, we're, we're doing well with our faith and then there's something to stop me. It's like we hit this roadblock the roadblock, I'm going to call it the roadblock of doubt. I'm going to do some graffiti tonight. Is that okay? I'm not very artistic, so don't judge my graffiti. It's my act of rebellion. No, not really. We, we, we hit this door called doubt. Imagine if I spelt it wrong. <laughs> doubt. It's like I'm doing good. I'm growing in my faith. I'm, I'm really confident that God is for me, that God is with me, and then all of a sudden, we run into doubt. Often just a little, a little thought sometimes. It might be a question that you have. It might be, you know, it might even be some shame. It's like, oh, you know, I want to believe that God loves me, but you should see what I've done. 
you should live, see the life that I've lived. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm wrecked with guilt. And actually, I'm just so unsure of, you know, God and, and whether he's real. And I, I saw something happen and, and, and I want to be confident that, that God is with me, but now I'm just kind of insecure and I'm afraid that I'm going to have to focus for this one. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid that maybe I'm not enough, that maybe God can use everyone else, but he can't hear me. And, and actually, I, I, can't, I can't hear. I'm not, I'm not hearing God's voice. And if he was real, he would, he would speak to me. And it's like we can be on this journey of faith, and then all of a sudden, we run into doubt. We run into something going wrong, something we can't understand. And our journey of faith can kind of feel like it's ground a little bit to a halt. Has anyone else ever experienced this? It's like, I feel like I'm doing really good. And then it's like, all of a sudden, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a bit unsure. But I want to encourage us. If faith is a journey, which it is, then doubt is not a dead end. Doubt is not a dead end to your faith journey, okay? Can I encourage you? If you've got doubts, it's not a dead end. It's not the journey stops here because I have run into doubt. Doubt is not a dead end. What do we do when we doubt? First step, don't panic. If you have doubts, don't panic. And sometimes we can panic, right? Because it's like, oh, it's all falling apart. I don't understand anything. What's real? Is this the matrix? Which which pill should I take? You know, we start freaking out because I've run into this wall of doubt. But doubt isn't a dead end. Actually, the strongest faith is not one that never doubts, but it's one that continues to press on through doubt. That is the strongest faith. I love what, the, uh, what Oswald Ch- Chambers says. He said, doubt is not always a sign that a man is wrong. It may be a sign that he is thinking. He's like, well, doubt is not a sign that man is wrong. Doubt is sometimes a sign that man is thinking. You know, when you work through your doubt, it can actually become a strength. When you continue to press on through it, when you really wrestle with your faith, when you boldly ask questions, it actually brings you to a place of strength. And can I just say, this is a safe place to ask questions. This is a safe place to have discussions about stuff that you don't understand. We might not be able to offer all of the answers, but this is a safe place to ask questions. Because doubt is not a dead end. Don't panic. Doubt is not a dead end. The good news is that if you have doubt, you can have faith. Actually, without doubt, it's really hard to have faith because, you see, doubt is not the foe of faith. Doubt is the friend of faith because without any doubt, you would never need any faith. If I never doubted anything, I wouldn't need faith. I would just believe and live in a constant state of believing. But actually, because I have doubt, I can actually have faith. Faith shines brighter in the face of doubt. It's like the stars. You can't see them during the day, but as soon as it turns night, those stars, man, they shine so brightly. And the same with your faith. Actually, on the backdrop of doubt, your faith shines bright. When it's like, I've got every reason to doubt, but I'm going to choose faith, actually, your faith shines brightly. Doubt is a friend of faith. It's not a dead end, your doubt. Actually, it's a doorway. Your doubt is a doorway. Your doubt is a doorway to faith. Your doubt is the doorway. When I step through doubt, when I come up here and step past my unsureness and my questions and my guilt and my shame, what I actually step into is faith. I decide I'm going to continue on this journey of faith. And I continue my journey and I keep walking with God. And then all of a sudden, I come back to I'm not hearing God's voice and I feel a little ashamed and I made a mistake. And actually, now I'm going to go through the doorway of doubt onto the journey of faith. I'm going to go through the doorway of doubt and continue my journey of faith because doubt is not a dead end, doubt is a doorway. How do I do it? I I choose to seek God. That's how I continue on the journey. I choose to stay on the journey. You see, what all of these things are, the questions, the guilt, the shame, the unsureness, it's actually an invitation to go deeper. 
It's an invitation that I can actually continue to grow in my faith. How do I do it? By continuing to seek God despite the questions that I have. By continuing to seek God despite the mistakes that I make. I continue on the journey of faith by not letting doubt be a dead end, but by letting doubt be a doorway into my faith. It's an invitation to go deeper. How do we do it? We, we keep seeking. And I think seeking God, that's the key to staying on the journey. Important, because the key to staying on the journey is not necessarily to find the answer. The key to staying on the journey it is, not, is no longer, let's say, let's say this thing that's up here, maybe it's fear. Maybe it's I'm just so afraid that this thing I'm so worried about might actually happen and that it's not real and that, that, that God won't be with me and that he's going to let me fall over. When, the, the, the key to faith is not no longer having fear. The key to faith is to, con- the key to the doorway of doubt, the key to continuing the journey is to actually seek God in the face of my doubt. In the face of my doubt, to say, I am going to continue to seek God. You know, you can't logic your way through doubt. You can only faith your way through doubt. You can't logic your way out. If, 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 a lot of people, I think, they get to this door and they have these questions. And it's like, if I just, if I just understood hermeneutics of the Bible a little bit better, then I could have faith. If I just understood what this crazy test, Old Testament story meant, then I could have faith. And they, what we do is we set up camp at the doorway of doubt, and our whole life becomes centered around, if I can answer this question, I can continue my journey. Where actually, I think what God does is He invites us, continue to seek me. Continue, don't just set up camp here, continue to seek me. If you're living with doubt, uh, sorry, I mean, if you're living without doubt, the question would be, are you actually living with faith? Are you actually living with faith? If you don't doubt anything, do you, are you, do you actually, have you actually wrestled with what you believe? And, and I don't think, and let me just point this, I don't think that this means we should go looking for doubt, okay? This is not, where are all the things I can doubt? Google, 10 most difficult scriptures. <laughs> Google, why shouldn't I be a Christian? I'm just flirting with, uh, with a little deconstructionism here. No, it's not to go looking for that. In our journey, we will find doorways of doubt. It'll happen in a, just those subtle things often is what it looks like. Often it's not earth-shattering things if we can continue to faith through it, to step through the doorway of doubt. The key is to seek. I love Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14a. It says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. What a powerful promise. I will be found by you. He doesn't say, hey, if you want to find me, here's this guru you can talk to. If you want to find me, there's a church down the road with deeper teaching. That's where I am. No. He says, if you seek me with all of your heart, That's where you'll find me. And I love that he says, I will be found by you. God's not looking for you. He's found you. He's with you. But you can find him. There's a big difference there. God's not not like, oh, where are you? Man, you're really lost. God knows where you're at. But right where you're at, you can actually find God by deciding to seek. Because seeking is faith. Seeking God actually takes faith. Often I think we think seeking God means I don't have an answer, I have doubt, so I need to seek God and figure out my doubt. No, it takes faith just to seek God. If you weren't seeking God, you would, if, you didn't believe, if you honestly didn't believe that God was real, there'd be no point seeking Him because you'd be convinced that He wasn't real. Because you doubt, because you're not sure, you have to seek Him. And it actually takes faith to say, I am not sure, but I'm going to keep walking through this doorway. I am not sure, but I'm going to keep seeking God. I don't actually have the answers, but I'm going to keep pursuing God. I'm going to keep seeking God. And not just seeking Him for the answers, but seeking Him for who He is. God, I'm not sure about that, that scripture. I'm not sure about how that person treated that person. I'm not sure about how that, 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 that Christian friend of mine just seems to be really against this group of people. I'm not sure about that, but God, I'm going to seek your heart. 
I'm going to seek who you are, and I'm going to trust that actually on the way I might actually find some of the answers to what I'm looking for. And can I just encourage you? It, let me applaud you if you're here this evening and you have doubt because you showed up, you kept seeking. Even though you had doubt, you're here this evening seeking God, seeking Him for who He is. Let me applaud you because that takes real faith. You're on the journey and you've decided, I'm going to keep coming. Doubt, it's, it's not a time to panic. It's an invitation to press in. It's an invitation to seek Him. And do you know what the real good news is? Even when I'm in the midst of doubt, even when I come up against this wall, it's, it's not like this, this door. It's not like God's waiting on the other side. And He's like, you'll find me if you can work your way through this. You know, if you can get over the, If you can just choose your faith and come on through. Have a little bit more faith. I'm, I'm waiting on the other side. No, you know that God is with you even in the midst of your doubt. God isn't distant in your doubts. Jesus says to those people in that scripture I read earlier, and it sounds a bit harsh. He says, you unbelieving generation. When they're saying, Jesus, your disciples can't heal this kid's boy. And he says, you unbelieving generation. And I don't think it's a condemnation of you unbelieving generation. That's not, you know, the, the, if that's the voice of God in your head, you, maybe you need to start listening for a different voice. But um, he, do, he doesn't kind of condemn them by that. Basically, what he's saying, you unbelieve, you haven't yet chosen faith. You haven't yet stepped through the doorway of doubt. But do you know what he does? He doesn't, he doesn't leave them standing here at the door. He doesn't leave the father of the son saying, I believe, but help me to believe. He doesn't leave him standing here, just dealing with his doubt. What's he do? He says, bring the boy to me. Bring your doubt to me. Bring your fear to me. Bring your need to me. I am with you, is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you might, you might be struggling with that, but you're not struggling with that alone. And if you can just choose, and then he gives the Father the option, right? If you believe, and he says, I believe, help me to believe. And that's enough for Jesus. He says, let's step on through this doorway. Let's step on into the miracle. Let's step on into the breakthrough because you've chosen faith. God actually wants to help you choose faith. You know, God's not afraid of your questions. God's not afraid of your doubts. God's not afraid of your anger and your concern. God actually says, come to me. Seek me. Bring that to me. And I'll give you the strength to believe. You know, sometimes I think, I've struggled with, with, with faith at times. You know, Talitha and I, we moved back from Taiwan um, two years ago. We really felt, it really, I guess, really just sensed that it was what God wanted us to do. We weren't sure, but we really sensed that He was calling us back here for a reason, that we would have come back here because He was doing something fresh. And I tell you what, when we walked back and we stepped in on this the first Sunday, it's like, yeah, I'm confident of that. I'm confident that, you know, that God's using us. And then some time went on. And the big vision we had maybe didn't happen as quick as we expected. And at the timing seemed to be, God, we're believing you for, to see this, but, but this is what we're currently seeing. And it's like, here I am just at the doorway of doubt. Is this, God, did you really call us? Like, God, I was really convinced that you gifted me and called me. But now I'm starting to question if that's really real. And it's like, have I just been pursuing what was in front of me next? Is that just what, you know, is it just because my parents were pastors and I, so I just started chasing that because it was kind of the normal thing to do and I like churches. Is that, is that why? And I, I just, I'm really encouraged by the words in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that anyone can boast. It, it's like if I need any proof at all that Jesus is real, that Jesus is work, all I need to do is look at myself and see the miracle of His grace that it's at work. 
within me. All I need to do is look and realize that, man, I was broken. I was insecure. I was so self-conscious. And he's transformed me into a new person. I now feel confident about my life. All I need to do is look at how I was and how I am. And it's like, if there's any reason I need to believe, that's reason enough for me. And I think for some people, you've been on this journey of faith and it's time to actually stop and stock take a little bit and realize and look back. And it's like when I hit doubt, oh man, how am I going to get through this? And look back and realize, wow, look at what God's done in my life. Look at how far he's gotten me. I can actually step through this doorway of doubt, continue that journey of faith because I know that I didn't achieve this on my own. I know that it was only God within, working within me that I'm actually even able to stand here in front of you today. There's going to be times where you want the answer to a question and the enemy is going to try to use that to drive you away from God. He'll try to drive you away. It's not real. You don't have faith. God doesn't love you. You're too bad. You're too messed up. You're too dirty. The devil will try to use it to push you away. And in the same way, God uses our doubts to draw us in. You think you're unlovable? Come and experience love. You think that you're too messed up? Hey, why don't you step, let's step through here together. And you'll experience on a deeper level than you ever have the love that I have for you. God can use your doubt to draw you in. You know, there's that scripture, um, even, it, it, even in the valley of the shadow of death, and it's like when you're in that valley, keep on going. You know, maybe for some people here tonight, you're in the valley of the shadow of doubt, and it's like, keep going. Don't stay there. Doubt was never meant to be the destination. Doubt is the doorway into faith. Because you have doubt, you can have faith. You just need to make a decision that I'm going to step through my doubt. I'm going to keep trusting God. I'm going to keep on the journey of faith. So a couple of questions just as we wrap up. Are you seeking answers or are you seeking God? I wonder, whatever you're facing right now, are you seeking answers more than you're actually seeking God? Have you set up camp here and it's like when, when God answers this, when God fixes this, then I'll continue in my faith journey. I just feel, even just right now, I just really feel that maybe you're here and there's, you've, you've, you're really struggling to comprehend something and God's saying, continue on the journey. Continue on the journey. Continue on the journey. Step through doubt. Step into faith. I just feel like maybe there's someone here, you've, you've set up that camp and it's like, I can't move on until this is finished and God's saying, continue on the journey. Are you discouraged by your doubt or you're actually letting it encourage you to seek? Do you just come up against this and you're like, man, this is just too much. I can't deal with it. Or is it like, wow, an invitation to experience God on a deeper level, an invitation to experience a deeper faith. Really simply, is there something that's causing you to doubt? Honestly, if you just ask, what, what are you struggling with? What are you wrestling with? And if there is, are you determined to keep seeking God? If there's something that you're wrestling with, are you determined to keep seeking God? And I just want to encourage you. I actually, this, was, this was not prepared, worship team. I don't know if we can do this. Michelle is looking at me. Uh, is there any way we could sing that Touch of Heaven song again? We, well, I think what we should do, why don't we just stand together? And we've just talked about something that's, that's pretty deep, that, that shakes us. Is this okay if we spend just another couple of moments here? And, and I think just as we, as we worship together, can, can you just ask yourself those questions in your heart and maybe make that decision that I'm going to choose faith. I'm going to step through the doorway of doubt. I'm not going to let doubt be a roadblock. I'm going to choose faith. So as we sing, we might just sing just, just a little bit of it. But would you just right where you are, make a decision as we sing, I'm stepping through the doorway of doubt. I'm stepping into faith. I have questions. I don't have answers, but I'm going to continue on the journey of faith. Can we sing that together? Is it? wherever you're at, just, just open your heart, just seek God in this moment. Seeking, I want more of you. Yeah. 
listening, keep seeking. takes faith to sing that. Why don't you sing it and believe it? That's what faith looks like. I almost feel like saying to someone here, look at you, you just chose faith. Look at you, you're choosing faith. You never thought you'd be able to choose faith and you just chose faith. In singing those words and believing it with your heart and when you sung, I open up my heart to you, something changed. You actually meant that with your heart and that is what faith looks like. I've got my doubts, but I'm surrendering it all. I love that. I throw my fears into the wind. My desire is to know you, God. I throw my questions. I throw my concerns. I throw my worry. I throw my shame. I throw my guilt. I throw my pain. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. And so, Jesus, we just thank you for for what just happened. For the, the people here this evening who stepped through that doorway of doubt, and continued their journey of faith. And I just really pray that as they walk out of here, that there would be a confidence in their hearts, a confidence in their souls that this wasn't just nice vibes or what they had for lunch, that this is actually Jesus working in their hearts. And we just pray as people have opened their hearts, God, that that you would fill them afresh in Jesus' name. And I pray for people who maybe are still, it's like they're, in the, they're halfway through the doorway, God. I just pray that that momentum would continue through, that you'd encourage them, you'd continue to be with them as they step through, that you would help them with their unbelief. You'd help us with our unbelief. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, maybe you're here this evening and that doubt has been around just starting a journey of following Jesus. Maybe it's like, I don't know if I, I, I don't know if this is real. I don't know if I can believe that. Maybe you're new here tonight and you're like, wow, this is a lot. Um, so yeah, we, we're, we're a lot, but we're passionate because God's done something really tangible in our lives. God's transformed us in a really tangible way. And we really believe that He can do that for you also. And there might be some doubt and some questions you might not have at all. But what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to continue on your journey of faith. Because even if you don't realize you've been on it, you've been on a journey of faith. And maybe it's time to actually step through that doorway and to make a decision, a conscious decision of Jesus, I want to follow you. Maybe it's for the first time. Maybe you've just been like, man, I've been off doing my own things. And I just realized tonight that this is the life I want. I want a life of following Jesus. I want a life of pursuing Jesus. And you just feel like you need to put a stake in the ground and say, tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this decision and I'm not heading back. If, if I could just get us to maybe just to bow our heads and just create a moment of privacy. I just want to give you something 
tangible and physical to do as a sign of maybe what's happening internally, an outward expression of an inward decision. And if that's you and you're saying, I want to just go on that journey of following Jesus, would you just raise your hand right where you are? I'd love to pray with you and just encourage you. Just as I look across here a few times, I actually can't really see. So if you're raising your hand, awesome. I can see it in faith. And Jesus, we just pray for these people responding to you this evening. I just pray as they take this first, maybe this first conscious step on this journey of following you, that even as they leave, they would leave not the same. They would leave encouraged. And I just really pray that you would fill their heart with a really practical hope. I believe that's a word for you, that there's a practical hope, that, that whatever your situation looks like, God wants to give you a hope in that situation. And I just pray that you would do that, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Hey, why don't we give it up for anyone who made that decision tonight? That is awesome. It's the best decision you'll ever make. And Sarah and James are going to come and tell you what you can do next.